As long as we have God, we have hope. This is an anonymous quote, but to me, it's really a statement of our faith. So I'd like to kind of reframe it for a moment. And we could really state with certainty in our faith that God is always with us. So we always have hope. We have God with us always through the Holy Spirit. I've been preaching through this series, Come Holy Spirit, and we've been exploring the many ways that we experience the presence of the Holy Spirit and the many ways that the Holy Spirit is working in our lives and in our world even now. This quote from John Nelson Darby states it like this, the presence of the Holy Spirit is the keystone of all our hopes. And I love that thought that really hope is the keystone, that place on which hope is built. So I want us to think deeply about this connection between hope and the Holy Spirit. If God chooses to be with us through the person of the Holy Spirit, isn't that the most hopeful thing of all? That God chooses to be with us, never to leave us, never to forsake us. God chooses to dwell with us and God chooses to be in relationship with us. God never moves away from us. We may at times uh, drift away. But God is always calling us to closer relationship. And God chooses to be engaged in our world. Thanks be to God. This is a word, a message of hope. And so my prayer, which is the title of the message today, is this. Come, Holy Spirit, build our hope. Now, we are well into this series on the Holy Spirit. And um, I want to be very clear about something, and I've checked with Bob about this, that I planned my message today long before he spoke last week on hope, right? And um, he used the image of the glass being half full, not half empty. But... Um, when I saw that one of his uh, main uh, images was hope as our companion, I thought this is really the connecting point. The Holy Spirit has this way of weaving things together. I couldn't have even planned it this well, and I did not even pay Bob to lead into my message today. <laughs> Believe me, I did not pay him. But um, this is how it comes together, right? This wonderful image that he gave to us about hope as our companion. And while I was at that store, I also bought this little heart-shaped stone with the word hope on it. And I carried it with me, literally, um, through the end of our trip. And you'll hear more about that. But hope is our constant companion. And I want to build on this. Yes, the pun is intended about hope as our companion, because the way that hope is our companion is through the Holy Spirit, yes? The Holy Spirit is with us. And just for a moment, try picturing the Holy Spirit as a person. Um, the Holy Spirit is that part of God, that person of God. And so imagine the Holy Spirit as the presence of God with you, going through each day with you. Everywhere you go, God is with you. So I wanted to share um, just briefly something a little bit about my week and why this journey with my vacation on hope was so important. Um, before I left for the beach, I had to have a medical procedure, and I'm hopeful 
that this latest test, which is leading to yet another test next week, is getting me closer to the answer to the pain that I've had for several months. So that was at the beginning of the trip. And then when we left the beach yesterday, uh, Rick and our son Matt and I traveled to Connecticut so that we could be there with his family for the memorial service of his cousin's daughter. Um, she was only 31 years old. Um, she was born not long after Rick's mother, my mother-in-law, was killed in a car accident. And she was named in honor of Rick's mother, the name Carmen, Carmen Lopez. And Martha knew my mother-in-law and taught with her. And so like my mother-in-law, Carmen was a teacher of young children. In fact, one of the families for whom she nannied was at the service yesterday. And it was so beautiful to see this little boy running around because we knew the connection and Carmen loved little children and had spent her career, as short as it was, caring for young ones. So knowing that this would be sort of the culmination of my time away, it was so um, helpful to me and such a blessing to be focused on hope during this week. I wanted to share with you an image um, that I took while at the beach. I got up fairly early one morning to take some pictures to share with you. And um, our connection with the sun is a physical necessity. We know that. It's also a psychological and emotional need. But there's also a spiritual connection for us with the sun. And this first picture, if you can see, the sun is trying to break through the clouds. And our week at the beach actually began with stormy weather. And um, much of the first couple of days, there was a lot of clouds and not as much a storm, but many um, rainy days too. So the sun did come through that morning. And the weather kind of mirrored my spiritual journey of looking for hope. And so here's something I want us all to remember that I was reminded of. What happens when you look for hope? When you look for signs of hope every day when that's your focus, your perspective, your viewpoint, you're going to find it, right? If you're looking for hope, you're going to find it. And Bishop Desmond Tutu wrote this, hope is being able to see that there is light despite all of the darkness. And to me, that was really my focus, trying to find my reassurance of the hope that is present even through the difficulties. Light always follows darkness eventually. And so um, I have a series of three pictures that show you a little bit about how the sun did come out. And what I want you to note is not just the sun, but its reflection and its impact. And um, this is Bethany Beach, by the way. And there's almost like a cross that's formed with the rays of the sun. I thought that was really beautiful. So with this image in the background of the sun rising, the sun coming through the clouds and the darkness, we focus on our Bible lesson today. The way that the Apostle Paul describes how the Holy Spirit works in us to build hope. It's a process. It's a spiritual maturing process. Our hope is in our faith in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And ultimately, as Christians, our faith is that one day we will share in the glory of God. The glory of God. And so here and now, we receive glimpses of God's glory. And that gives us hope, right, to journey on. The Apostle Paul, we know in this passage, is writing to the Christians in Rome. And those of us who studied the read together the book of Romans through our Bible study, 
oh so many weeks. Um, you know, it's funny to me how often these passages have been coming up for me. But Paul knows suffering. He knows what it is like to suffer to the point of death, remember, the Apostle Paul. And so he's encouraging the Christians in Rome to persevere in the face of trouble and tribulation and even persecution. And he talks about the process of the Holy Spirit working in our lives, a process that grows in our difficulties. Now, sometimes we say through or because of, and I, I kind of cringe when I hear that. I like to think about the Holy Spirit working in the midst of our difficulties. It's not quite a magical way. Sometimes when you hear this passage, it, it builds one piece upon the other and you think, ooh, suffering leads right to hope. It's not quite that easy, is it? But I do believe that God is with us in our suffering and can bring meaning to us. Paul writes that this process includes not only suffering, but endurance, character, and hope. First, suffering can lead to the building of endurance that is a deeper trust in God, a more long-term trust in God, right? Endurance. It develops over time. It's not magically there. And endurance produces character. And when we have character, we can more consistently choose to do what honors God. Character produces hope. Where we experience growing certainty that our ultimate destiny is an eternity of good in God's presence. And because we have that hope, the present is different too. But our hope will never put us to shame. We will be fully vindicated in our hope. And as our key verse states today, hope does not disappoint us. Hope does not disappoint us. We will never, in the end, be disappointed for hoping in God. So how can we be so confident of our ultimate destination? How can we be confident in our hope here and now, not just for eternity? So I want to bring us back to the display on the altar. The picture, right, is depicted pouring out the Holy Spirit, but it comes from the heart of God. God's love has been poured into our hearts, and this is a never-ending stream. God's love never runs out, it never runs dry, and it never fails us. God will always keep his promises because God loves us. And God has the power to keep his promises. God loves us so deeply that each of us carries God's love inside of us through the Holy Spirit. So love from God's heart to our heart through the presence of the Holy Spirit in this scripture passage, the Apostle Paul reminds us that each and every person who trusts in Jesus Christ has been given God's very own spirit to live in us, to live in our hearts. God's spirit lives in us. The source of our hope, my friends, is the love God has for each and every one of us. God's love for you, for me, never ends, and therefore our hope can never run out. The well-known pastor of his day, Charles Spurgeon, wrote this, Faith goes up the stairs that love has built and looks out the windows which hope has opened.
Isn't that a beautiful image? Hope opening a window, and we're able to get there because of God's love. Another Christian pastor said it this way, Christian hope shines from the eternal flame of God's love for us. My friends, where there is God's love, there is always hope. Our hope is built by the power of the Holy Spirit at work in us, in our individual lives, in our relationships, and in our community. Hope grows both within us and among us, and God uses this same process through the Holy Spirit to build hope in a community, just as in individual lives. So I want to show you uh, some pictures I took when I was leaving the beach one afternoon. And again, you see the sun. Uh, well, it's not the afternoon. It was later in the morning. And then you'll see the if you can, the rays of the sun coming through the tree. In the last picture, I kept because, uh, believe it or not, that's my big shadow there. <laughs> but that's, right, you, you can only have a shadow if there's sun. And so the sun has an impact on us always. Its effect is always felt just as God's love and hope remain in us. And so I left the beach renewed in my hope, but much more focused on this process of the Holy Spirit building and strengthening my hope. And I'm so grateful for the opportunity to share with you all today a little bit of my journey of hope. And I'd like to share with you this blessing, also from the book of Romans. May the God of all hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, build our hope. Amen.